Good evening, everybody. How's it going this this afternoon? Hey, how's it going, Logan? Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Hopefully I'm not coming over too loud. Seems like we got some people in here today. Four right now. Awesome. Fantastic. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get all set up. I'm trying to make sure I've got everything squared away here. Everything is looking good. Casey says horrible. <laughs> I'm trying to be a little bit more lively today so I uh, can help or uh, kind of liven up because Bub's not here today and uh, everybody says I sound like a, like a school teacher. So I guess class is in session, correct? I, uh, so, uh, I believe our YouTube channel is, um, is actually working now. I, I do believe I have it all squared away. It says we've got two watching on YouTube. Um, just want to say hello to all of our YouTube, uh, YouTube subscribers. If you're subscribed, appreciate it. Professor. <laughs> That's messed up, Casey. Come on, man. Give me a little bit more credit than that, bub. <clears throat> All right. So tonight, um, going to have a little bit of a, a professor professor uh, education session, I guess. Tonight, um, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, inspections on trailers. Um, Something I think that uh, needs to uh, needs to be addressed. Um, need to make sure that uh, everybody understands on what a proper way to inspect a trailer. Um, and I think tonight will probably be a uh, good uh, good time to be able to do that. So um, we'll go and take a couple more minutes here. Make sure uh, everybody's in here, and uh, we will get underway. <laughs> well, Jordan, we may, uh, yes, we do have a tire. Um, we can get one for you. Uh, we just have to order it in here real quick. So, um, we'll talk to best one tomorrow and hopefully be able to get that accomplished for you. If not, we have, uh, we have some tires at the, uh, yard we might be able to square you up with. So it's good to see you in here. I haven't seen you for a while. Ah, uh, I see, Don. Okay, that's fair. I appreciate it, though. Is uh, little Tina in here yet? So, uh, is everything working out pretty good? Can everybody hear me all right? No, uh, no, uh... Well, let me see. Let me move my camera just a bit here. Um, 
no reverb or anything like that nothing uh everything's coming coming across pretty clear all looking uh all looking real good oh well, that's great good deal hey uh casey uh is there any way that you can um go and try to see uh send a message over uh the youtube uh youtube channel see if it see if the uh, chat comes through like it should be I'm pretty sure it's going to, but I just want to make sure. Sweet. So I got I I did figure that. Awesome. Good deal. All right. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so tonight, basically, we're going to be uh, addressing um, how to properly do an inspection on a 15,000 uh, GVWR trailer. Um, typically, this is going to be a trailer that um, a lot of guys that are in our non-CDL classifications will be running. Um, every now and then, we'll have a CDL driver running a trailer this small, but um, for the most part... Uh, Thank you, Casey. I do believe I did receive it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. That is awesome. Thanks a lot. I did figure it out, and it, it's going to start working out pretty good from now on. So, anyways, back to what we were saying. Uh, we're going to be doing an inspection on a 15,000 uh, GVWR trailer. Um, now, right now, I'm currently in the office. However, I did make a video um, earlier this week um, on uh, on an inspection, and we're going to go over that, uh, uh, you know, step by step, making sure everybody understands it, um, and uh, pretty much uh, go from there. So, let me swatch over here and get into our main desktop here, and. Um, I'm not going to uh, let everybody listen to the video. I'm going to just go ahead and kind of narrate it uh, a bit and um, uh, try to follow along. And you know, we'll try to we'll try to move along at a pretty good clip. But um, um, this is uh, the best way that I thought we could do this, and uh, hopefully, uh, it works out pretty good. So, um, but here we go. So. Hopefully nobody can hear the audio on that because um, I'm kind of ashamed of the audio. You got this big fat dude with a fat head in there, and uh, <laughs> we're going to move ahead. We're going to move ahead just a bit here. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is, um, gosh darn it. Sorry about that. Let's see, where is the pause? Okay, so basically the reason why you're going to do an inspection, and I just need to say this out, you know, number one, you want to prevent problems arising out up on the road. Um, inspections are very important. Um, they take just moments to do, and it's something that's incredibly, incredibly important um, in my eyes. And uh, they're not very hard to do, and it's just something that needs to be done every day. So what we're looking at here is we're going to be looking at some tools that we uh, typically do. Uh, right now, we're looking at what you would call a, an electric grease gun. Um, not everybody has to have one of these. It's, uh, it is one of those items that uh, we have here simply because we maintain a lot of trailers and we do a lot of greasing. However, we highly recommend that every single truck carries a, uh, a, a grease gun of some sort. Um, it's not necessary to have any really fancy grease gun, um, but uh, you definitely want a grease gun so you can uh, grease your landing gears, your jacks, your fifth wheel, um, or any other item that definitely needs some grease. So the next one we're going to be looking at here is going to be a torque wrench. Um, this is kind of important. Uh, a torque wrench is one of those items that uh, you're not going to use every day. 
Um, but when you have to adjust your tires or when you have to change a tire, you want to properly maintain a uh, proper torque spec on your, um, on your lugs. Um, for a 15,000 GVWR trailer, you are going to be looking at 120 foot pounds is what you're going to need to put on those lugs. Um, I always tell guys, if you get your tires changed from somewhere um, that does trucks, you need to be very careful that they don't over tighten your lugs. One of the, hi Tina, how's it going? Uh, one of the biggest problems that uh, that you run into when you run into a 15 cage trailer is you got to worry about your lugs. And if they're not properly torqued, what will end up happening is you'll snap them off and then basically your wheel will go flying off into the uh, the oncoming traffic or it'll fly off into the woods. It's not very, not very good and it's very costly. You just need to make sure that you're properly torque it. Um, very important. Um, next thing we're looking at here is going to be just some sockets. Um, everybody should carry some sort of a socket so you can do a minor repair of some sort. And uh, you want to have a standard and a metric type of a socket. Um, and it works out uh, pretty well that way. Um, the next thing that we are, are going to look at here is probably going to be a multimeter. Um, this is not something you're going to need every single day, but if you run into a wiring issue, um, this is something that is incredibly helpful to help you out and maintain um, uh, and to make sure that you can diagnose an electrical issue. Um, when trailers get, it doesn't matter if you're running a semi-trailer or, or, or if you run in some sort of a some sort of a hot shot trailer. The fact of the matter is, is you're always going to get the green goo on those connections and you're going to have to find a way to be able to figure out how to make those lights work so that you're, you're compliant and legal. Um, they're very inexpensive for the most part. They cost about nine, 10 bucks. Um, I think the one I got here came from Harbor Freight. So it's, it's kind of, ex, you know, inexpensive. It's, it's something that is very, very helpful when you need to diagnose a situation. Uh, the next thing here, what we're looking at here is probably a 20 ton bottle jack. Um, 20 ton bottle jack for a 15K trailer is way excessive. Um, typically you only need, you only need about a 10, um, probably a 10 ton will, will be just fine. The one thing you want to make sure is that the bottle jack has a screw head like what this one's got. Um, it helps you to be able to adjust the bottle jack so that you can get it to the proper height. It's very, very helpful, and it's something that is that I would highly recommend every single guy carry. Um, you have some guys that will never change a, a tire on their own, but a bottle jack is incredibly helpful, um, and it makes your life ten times easier. Um, and it's 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 not something that's too difficult to carry. Um, next thing we've got here is uh, basically a small screwdriver. Um, most of you guys carry screwdrivers uh, in your toolboxes or whatnot, but this one's a little bit small. Um, you want a smaller screwdriver, so in case you have to pop out one of your lights or something. Shut up, shut shut up, uh, bub. <laughs> in case you got to pop out one of your lights of some kind, those types of uh, those types of screwdrivers are very, very nice and they uh, work very, very well. Um, the next thing here we're looking at is a brake spoon. Um, brake spoons are fairly in, uh, inexpensive um, and those are used to basically adjust your brakes. Um, I'm trying to be more upbeat, hopefully, and not everybody's falling asleep yet here, okay? I'm, tr I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to be a little upbeat and... Uh, Hopefully everybody's not uh, not falling asleep. But anyways, what we're looking at here is a brake spoon. You can buy them at AutoZone, whatnot, and those are used to adjust your um, non-self-adjusting brakes. Um, you have basically two types of brakes in a 12-2 configuration. You've got adjusting and non-adjusting. Your non-adjusting brakes are going to be required to have a brake spoon. And uh, um, for the most part, if you have self-adjusting brakes, your, your brake spoon is... Um, you never have to worry about your brake spoon. So <clears throat> don't, don't be yawning at me, Jordan. Come on, man. That's messed up. Come on, guys. So um, next thing here is uh, we're going to be looking at just to basically, you know, make sure you have a pair of gloves to do your inspections. Um, you know, you're going to be touching and feeling things. Uh, no pun intended. Keep that keep that kind of kind of down low. Um, but uh, you're going to be touching and feeling things on a trailer that uh, it's going to get your hands dirty or 
Um, sometimes you can cut your hands and a pair of gloves are really nice. So, um, so what we're looking at here is <laughs> Jordan. Um, so what we're looking at here is basically a breakaway battery. Um, you like my earbuds? Those are pretty cool, aren't they? I like them. I finally got them back from Travis. He stole them from me and he actually received a, a pair for his, uh, for his birthday. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, you, I, I have to have these in because so I can hear what exactly is is going on so I don't go too fast. So, so anyways, um, what we're looking at here is on this particular trailer we're doing an inspection. We already knew that we had um, a, um, a problem with the breakaway cable. Um, and this is what you would call a breakaway battery. Um, it's always helpful to carry one of these in your truck just to make sure that if it goes bad that you have a way to replace it. Um, but, uh, you know, the breakaway battery is something we're going to get into here in just a couple minutes um, to make to kind of show guys how to change it. They're not very difficult to change. They're easy to do um, and so on and so forth. Now, right here, what we're doing is we're starting our, basically our inspection on the trailer. And it always starts in the cab of the truck. Um and uh, what you want to do is you want to do a slow roll. Um, I should be a hand model. <laughs> uh, so anyways, you're going... <coughs> Pardon me. So anyways, you're going to do a... Um, you're going to do what's called a slow roll. Don't, don't be sleeping with me now. Don't, don't be sleeping now, Jordan. That's messed up, man. That, that's not right. So it is what it is. So anyways, um, we're going to do what's called a slow roll. And uh, what you're going to do is you're trying to adjust your brakes or make sure that your brakes um, are working. Um, so if you notice here, we're going to be reaching down. Yeah, COVID. I, I, I bet it is. So you're going to reach down and you're going to touch your brake controller and you're going to actuate it to make sure you don't roll. Um, it's going to be done here in just a second. And uh, any time now put the truck into park and or drive and then you uh and then you end up moving holding that holding your little button there and you try to pull forward and if the brakes lock up then you know you're doing great <laughs> don't give me a covid cough come on now <laughs> so some of the so some of the people on the free load quote side uh we've got several people that are watching us on the free load quote side um they're there uh we got up to nine people on the free load 10 si 10 on the free load quote side and now we're looking at uh seven on the um, um flq uh side and uh it looks like that we are holding at two people on our youtube site so uh, all in all not too bad so as you can tell we did a uh a rolling stop here and and uh the brakes were working just fine um where is the radio <laughs> well, mom, hey, mom, you got you have to go to the FLQ side because I don't think Jordan can see your messages. You're in the uh, you're in the freeload side, so you got you got to go over to the uh, the FLQ side to uh, so uh, Jordan can see the can see the can see the messages. So, um, so I believe right now um, we've already done our no need for a radio. So I believe right now all we've already done. We've already done our uh, our uh, rolling test, and I believe I went on to show you how to do a, um, if you have self-adjusting brakes, of how to adjust your uh, self-adjusting brakes. Your self-adjusting brakes always adjust when you go in reverse and you hold your brakes. So what you want to do is when you do your self-adjusting brakes, you're going to back up four or five times. And each one of those times you're going to hold your brakes and that should adjust your brakes to the proper tension that they need to be. Um, now we're testing, uh, right now we're testing our, um, our breakaway cable. And we already know that this battery is bad, but uh, to test your breakaway cable, this is something that is done every single day. Not every weekend, not every other day. This is done every single day. You pull your breakaway cable and you put the truck in to drive and you let it roll. Pull the pin grenade. That's right. Um, every single day. Not just once in a while. Every day. That's one of the most common 
that's one of the most common out of services that a hotshot will ever receive is improper breakaway cable. You always got to make sure that that breakaway cable works. When you pull forward and you pull that breakaway cable, you, pull, you hop out of the truck, pull the breakaway cable, hop back into the truck, put it in the drive. You let the, dry, the truck just literally roll and that should stop you. Um, it should basically lock the trailer tires up. If it does not, you've got a faulty breakaway battery and that needs to be replaced. It's either a faulty breakaway battery or it's going to be a, um, a faulty breakaway switch, which happens every now and then, especially in your heavy, heavier trailers, like your, like your 24,000 or your 26,000 uh, uh, GVWR trailers. But we're not discussing those. The maintenance aspect on a 24K trailer or a 26K trailer is a little different than what you're going to be doing on a 15K trailer. However, they're very similar and you can kind of apply the same principles. But uh, there, there are definitely a few different things on a 24K trailer or a 26K trailer than there are for a 15K trailer. A 15K trailer is a much lighter type of a trailer and the inspections need to be much more thorough. You have got to check these 15K trailers because they are not physically designed all the time to be running up and down the interstate for two or 300,000 miles and expect everything to work correctly. You must inspect these things and you've got to do a good job doing it or you're going to have problems on the road and that's not what you want to have. So what we're doing here is we already know that the breakaway battery on this particular unit is bad. Um, right now we're just showing you how to change that, how to change that breakaway battery. Most breakaway batteries are in the 12 volt range, but you can find them in a 14 volt range. Your 14, 14 volt range are, are going to be for your larger trailers that run hydraulic disc setups. Um, but uh, a 12 2 setup typically takes a little battery like this, and it's basically a standard 12 volt breakaway battery. Um, very simple, um, not hard to do. The, uh, the battery is a little hard to get out of the, uh, of the battery box. <clears throat> Um, but it's supposed to be. They're not supposed to be in there jostling around. They're supposed to be in there tight. They're supposed to be in there snug. Um, and it's definitely something that uh, you, you need to check on a regular basis. Like I said, having a faulty breakaway battery or a faulty breakaway switch is one of the number one problems that hot shots get put out of service for. Almost every this is one of the because it's it's one of the most neglected type of a type of a situation, um, and that's something that you have got to make sure that you check. This is I mean, it's simple to do, but a lot of guys just don't do it. I can't stress this enough. This is one of the most common problems that hot shots have in general on a hot shot rig. You need to make sure you properly check this breakaway cable, and it needs to be working. Um, this is also another way, uh, this is also another way for you to basically check your brakes. If you do not have brakes when this, when this thing is pulled, you've got a brake issue that needs to be resolved and the trailer does not need to be going down the road. It's as simple as that guys. It's very, very simple. So basically there's only two tabs on a breakaway battery. You just, you basically hook it up to the, to the tabs, throw it back into the box and you're pretty much done. So it's uh, it is very very easy to do and it's not uh, uh, it's not too difficult. Now you'll notice um, whenever you whenever you do pull the old battery off and you put a new battery on, yeah, that would be a good idea. You can actually put a ribbon around it. Uh, that's a great statement, uh, Casey. You can put a little ribbon around it and then use it as a way to be able to pull it out. Um, if you don't have a screwdriver, yeah, that's a that's a great way. Um, you know, and, and, uh, that will definitely help. You can either put a little string around it or you can put like what Casey mentioned here, you can put like a little ribbon, uh, to make it easy to get that battery out of there. Typically you have to change these batteries at least one time a year. So if you, if you have a trailer that's got a little bit of age on it, um, typically you're going to have to change it probably within that year, maybe in the second year. Um, the batteries, it, it, like I said, it's roughly around a year. Now, DOT rules and regulations for a battery this size, for a basically a small 12-volt battery, um, needs to make sure it actuates the trailer brakes for, I believe, about five minutes. Okay, so you have to have enough current in that battery to be able to hold the trailer brakes for at least five minutes. 
Okay. Um, uh, you know, other than that, that's, that's, uh, that's about it. So, um, I think we're going to probably move on here, um, and to make sure that we test the breakaway battery to make sure it works. Um, the one thing you always have to realize when you put a new breakaway battery in, they're not fully charged. So you have to make sure that you charge that battery. Typically, as long as you keep it hooked into the truck, um, I did not fall off the trailer today, uh, bub. Um, I did, however, fall off the trailer a couple weeks ago and it hurt like hell. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> anyways, what we're doing right here is we're just basically checking the breakaway battery to make sure it's actually actuating. And, uh, you're going to see, uh, just here in a minute that it, uh, that it actually stops everything and, and, uh, uh, we're, uh, we're good to go on the battery. So. Yeah, and it, and it clearly worked as, as good as it should, so. How am I coming across so far? Everything's still working out okay? Not too bad? Am I sounding like a school teacher? Does anybody have any questions so far about where what we've covered up here? Is, any, is there anybody in here? Does anybody have any questions yet? <laughs> I'm trying to make it as entertaining as I possibly can. I know I'm not that that uh, that great. Jordan says yes. Are you bored, Jordan? Thanks, Mom. Appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's so boring. This is kind of this is <laughs> Casey Professor. <sighs> No, nah, well, I'm sorry, guys. What is your question, Bub? What is your question, Bub? I am hungry. That's not a question. That's a statement. Don't quite understand which is proper way to put the pole, put proper way to pull away cable. I guess I don't understand what you mean by that, Casey. He must still be typing. <clears throat> so why we're, why we're figuring out what uh, Casey is saying here. Um, um, like I mentioned, guys, we are on three different platforms. We have a uh, Facebook on... Um, on, uh, 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 we actually have two Facebook pages. Um, one is a uh, freeloadquote.com, uh, freeload quote, and then we actually have FLQ Transportation Group, and then we also are on YouTube uh, underneath FLQ Transportation Group. Um, like I said, we, we've got three platforms here that we're trying to trying to post to, and uh, yeah. Ah, that is a great yes. You are absolutely 100% correct on that. Um, thank you for uh, bringing that to my attention, Casey. That is aw that is awesome. Um, let me go ahead and back up here just a bit on this video here. Um, one of the things that you have to be very mindful of, when you hook up your breakaway cable to the truck, as you notice here, the breakaway cable is actually hooked up to this receiving pin down here. That is the proper way to hook up a breakaway cable or having an alternate connection out here on the bed somewhere or somewhere other than the hitch. You never want to have the breakaway cable hooked up to any part of this hitch. 
any part of the hitch, it, that is illegal. You never want to have that, okay? It always has to be um, uh, hooked up to the actual um, truck frame or truck, something other than the hitch. It just, it needs to be hooked up that way. That Thank you, Casey. That was, that was an excellent, excellent, excellent uh, remark that we needed to make. Thank you on that. I appreciate it. So, so we're going to go ahead and move on just a bit here. Going to slide on up. And we're going to go ahead and we're starting our inspection, which we've already started um, with our, uh, uh, our sliding roll. And what we're going to do here now is we're going to just take a look at this, uh, this hitch. Um, this, we utilize all fifth wheel hitches. Um, and fifth wheel hitches, there are a few things that you need to be kind of mindful of when you uh, are working with a fifth wheel hitch. Number one, you want to try to have a hitch that is well greased. Um, especially up here on between the uh, connection point between the actual fifth wheel and the um, and the head of the of the main fifth wheel it needs to be greased so it can either slide now if you don't want to use grease that's fine you don't have to use grease um, you can get what's called a Teflon plate and that's one of these things that is down right here if everybody can see my mouse um, this Teflon plate basically goes up underneath your fifth wheel and this Teflon plate can act as a, um, as a grease um, or, or in the place of grease. So um, Teflon plates are all right. They're nowhere near as messy. You don't have to worry about getting all dirty and stuff like that unless, you know, you've already got grease on it. But um, you got to kind of kind of be mindful of that. But uh, for the most part, um, they work out pretty good. So <clears throat> when you're doing your inspection, and your um, uh, hi Kai, doing well. Hopefully you're doing pretty good too. It's good. That is correct. Um, if you guys want to get together this weekend, um, I'd have to talk with Lee, but uh, we can have uh, steaks on the grill if you guys want to. Um, I don't know about ribs. I don't. I think I've got some beef ribs. I don't know if I have some. I know I don't have any uh, pork ribs. Um, all right, so what you're also going to look at too when you're doing your um, your inspection is down here on the bottom where they where our fifth wheels hook in. You're always going to want to make sure that there these pins are properly in place and the um, safety pins. Um, yeah, sometimes they do, but um, sometimes they are kind of a pain in the butt. But uh, they do work pretty well. Um, Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do, Curtis. It's going to be it's going to be Saturday. It's not going to be Sunday. So you got time. Come on, man. You can show some love up here. You'll be all right. <laughs> so anyways, you want to make sure your pins are all set up. All that stuff is great. Um, you don't want to have any of these pins missing. Um, that is a number one out of service violation. Um, and so you always want to make sure that these pins are all set up. Okay. Uh, number, t uh, you know, another thing you got to worry about is these connection points right here, where the where the basic arms of the fifth wheel go down into the rails. You want to make sure that those are snug, and you want to make sure they're properly connected, um, and you want these always adjusted to the height of your trailer. Um, I can go into a lot more detail on that at a later time. I'm not going to do that on this one, but you kind of want to have these. You kind of want to have this this head, this you know your fifth wheel head, to make sure that you you've got a pretty flat running trailer. It helps you get better fuel mileage, um, and it uh, also uh, lessens tire wear because you're not transferring your weight to the rear axle. So you want to try to have these as as level as possible based upon the trailer that you're doing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move up to this one right here. Here's the next thing you need to look at. Um, okay, so way up here on the top of this, which uh, I don't know if you can see. Let me see here. Let me go ahead and move this around just a bit. Uh, you can't really see it. Anyways, on the on your fifth wheel, on the basically the trailer side of things, you're going to have a set screw that's going to be up here on top, which it's hard to see. I wish I would have got a better picture of this, but. The set screw up here, you're going to have two of them, mostly on our trailer. Sometimes you only have one. Sometimes you've got a, a combination of a set screw 
and um, um, another uh, another screw on the back side of it, so it actually squeezes it squeezes it together. Um, but on this particular unit, and mostly all of our units, those set screws need to be tight. You got to make sure that they're snug. Um, do not ever let them run loose. Um, if a DOT sees that, typically you're going to get put out of service for something like that. Um, and like I said, there's two of them on this on these particular type of trailers. Um, and you always want them tight. Um, very, they're, they're pretty snug. And you want to make sure that the locking nut is actually snug too. You never want to run them without it. Um, I had one trailer that uh, a guy did that to. And it caused a lot of problems inside the trailer neck. Um, and it was pretty expensive to get repaired. So always make sure that those are done and that they are tight. Um, the next thing here is you always want to make sure you have your pin in. The pin is very important, um, but this pin is not supposed to carry a huge amount of weight. This particular trailer, you can take this pin and you can actually rotate it with your hands and everything works out pretty good. Um, on that pin, there's going to be a cotter key that's going to be the other side and you want to make sure that that cotter key is put in place and everything is rigged up tight. Now, one thing you need to be very mindful of here too. <clears throat> um, all of our trailers are set up underneath a fifth wheel setup. And um, we do not run uh, what's called a gooseneck ball. Um, now, if a driver comes in and he wants to run a gooseneck ball, that is perfectly fine. Um, he just needs to change some stuff out and the connection points are going to be a little different than a typical fifth wheel, okay? Um, they actually, um, I prefer a fifth wheel a lot easier. Um, they're much easier to work with unless you're going to be unhooking the truck and the trailer um, in several different ways um, whenever you come home. Um, but if you keep the truck together, a gooseneck's not too bad. But with us, because we swap trailers and we try to move trailers around and we try to give our guys um, variations on the type of trailer that they're moving, um, the fact is, is that we want something that's easier to move around. And that's the reason why we work with fifth wheel. One final thing that we need to be very mindful of here on this particular setup is um, over here, I'm going to move, uh, I think it's going to be forward a bit. Let me see right there. If you notice, um, you always want to make sure that your arms are in locking position every single morning. There are assholes that are out there that will come by and literally try to unlock your fifth wheel. And basically the fifth wheel will fall on onto your uh, bed of your truck. Um, it happens all the time and they, there's a lot of people that do it to a regular semi. Um, you just have to make sure that, uh, that, that is always in locked place. Otherwise you could end up having a very bad day, especially if you have a load on the truck. It can, it can, I mean, some of these things will, I mean, and some of the Fords, because they're aluminum bodies, it, if you're heavy enough, it will literally crash through the uh, deck of the trailer or the deck of the, um, uh, of the truck. And that's something you want to be careful of. A good way to make sure that that doesn't happen is there's a pin right here. If everybody can see where the mouse is, that pin, um, goes into a slot that keeps that arm from coming out. So it's nice to have either a pin like what's in this right now, or excuse me, or you want to have some sort of a, um, a lock on that, that can go through there to keep that from ever coming out. It's very helpful. Um, and it can, uh, it can save you from having a very, very bad day. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and move on just a bit here. <clears throat> um, all right. So right here, what we got going on here is, um, we're basically starting what I would call the basic, uh, trailer inspection. Um, it's pretty simple to do. What you're looking for here is um, you want to you want to go through the trailer and check it for stress stress cracks, um, anything that's actually become faulty on the neck of the trailer. It happens. Um, sometimes you get structural fatigue on the, on the uh, neck of the trailers, and you want to when you're doing your inspection, you're always going to start from the neck of your trailer and you're going to start working back, and you want to make sure that there's no cracks in anything, no cracks in your welds. You want to make sure it's all true and tight um, and to make sure, um, um, yeah, luggage lock. Yeah, for that uh, for that fifth wheel lock, a luggage lock would probably work 
just make sure it's something that's good for outdoors. Um, I know Master Lock has a pretty good one that you can actually probably get, but um, um, you want something that's going to be that's going to be able to stand out to the elements because you don't want it rusting. And then, especially if you're a guy who don't ever un unhook his trailer, um, the biggest thing that you want to do, you know, especially if you don't hardly ever unhook your trailer, you don't want to be caught in a position where you put your key into your lock and you try to unlock it. Don't be yawning at me, Jordan. Don't be yawning at me. We're going to be getting to you here in just a moment. So you just wait, buddy. <laughs> so anyways, um, just make sure you get a lock that uh, <coughs> COVID again. Um, you just need to make sure that you have a lock that is due and good to work outside outdoors. Okay. All right. All right. So basically what's going on here is we're going through the neck of the trailer and we're checking it for stress cracks or anything like that. There's one other tool that I forgot to mention that is incredibly helpful that uh, you definitely need to have. And I don't know if I have it with me right now. No, I don't. Um, I normally carry it with me, but I think it's in my, I think it's in my bibs. Um, it's a little pocket flashlight. Uh, you know, some of our guys leave it like four to one o'clock in the morning. There's no lights on. So you need a, you definitely need a good flashlight. Um, I normally carry a little pocket light. Um, it's called a, or a pin light and, uh, um, it works out pretty good so that, uh, I can, I can actually do a proper inspection on, on the trailer. So, um, but yeah, so, all right, so we're going to go ahead and move on. I know we're at 642. I'm going to try to do this in an hour. Um, what I'm doing right here is, um, I'm looking at my trailer lights. Um, as of right now, the light is not on. Um, but in a moment it will be because I will go to the truck and I will literally turn the lights on. Um, that way we have everything working. Now on any trailer, yes, Casey, a flashlight. Flashlights are va invaluable. Always make sure you have one. It's they're they're too important. Okay, so on any trailer, doesn't matter if it's a 36 footer, doesn't matter if it's a 43 footer or a 48 footer or a 53 footer. It does not matter. DOT rules state you have to have a minimum of three marker lights on the side of a trailer. Now, the marker lights, the middle marker light does not have to be a turn signal. However, it would be nice if they were, uh, but these particular trailers do not have a turn signal on in the mid of the trailer. Um, it's not something that is required, um, but you do have to have at least three marker lights, okay? Each one of those marker lights must be working if they are installed. Um, and if they're not working, it is a violation from uh, the, the DOT. So you have to have the marker lights and they have to be working. Okay. Um, sometimes the DOT uh, will uh, like tap on them if they're not working to try to get them going up. Um, but uh, uh, you need to make sure you need to make sure that uh, that all of your marker lights are working. Not, we're going to go around the side of the trailer and um, every marker light needs to be working. Every single one of them. Okay. All right. And you always want to make sure that your license plate light is working. That is another common violation that guys run into in these smaller, um, uh, smaller setups because um, for some odd reason, the, the, the license plate light is, I don't know if they're crap or what exactly goes on with them, but there's always an issue with the license plate light. So always make sure you check that. So, um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and play this on here. And basically what we're going to do is again, we're going to check this for stress cracks or anything like that in the frame. Um, after I get my big hands out of the way, um, the stress cracks in the frame can be kind of minor every now and then, but if you see a stress crack up by the neck, you need to immediately take the trailer out of service and it needs to be fixed. Um, what we're doing here is um, uh, we're going through the frame and we're making sure that the uh, frame is solid. Um, and uh, right now we're just, if you're loaded, you use this time to actually make sure that you take care of your, uh, your straps, make sure they're tight, make sure they're good to go. Um, this is, uh, this one's looking okay until we get to the other side. Um, but we'll deal with that here in a minute. That's a, that's one part I was going to get to here in a couple minutes, but Casey made a really good point. 
if it has been snowing and you have salt spray and you have something on the roads, you need to make sure that you clean off your rear tail lights because if they cannot be seen, you will be ticketed for it, which is a lot of times it's a, it's a, it's a crock of crap. Um, but the thing is, is you need to make sure that your lights are clean. And for example, right here, we got a lot of salt on them. So typically I go back behind them and I, I try to wipe them off. Now, a couple of years ago, we had a driver that was driving through a snowstorm and his tail lights were covered with snow, um, because he was driving through a snowstorm and they told, they pulled him over and gave him a ticket, which is ridiculous, but it is what it is. So always make sure your rear lights are are wiped off and, and they are clean. Same way with your marker lights. You want to make sure they're all clean. Um, it's all good. So, um, but uh, yeah, just make sure all of your marker lights are working and they're in good order as well as your license plate lights. And uh, yeah, so it's good. So I'm going to go ahead and move on a little bit here. Um, let's see here. So we're going back, back down the side. Um, what we're doing here is we're just, again, we're checking the frame, making sure everything's good with the frame. Um, and we're making sure that we check our tires. DOT rules and regulations for any type of tires other than your steer tire is 230 seconds. 230 seconds. Um, typically, if it's down to the wear bars, you need to replace your tire. Okay. Now, I'm going to pause this here for a minute because um, um, this is uh, this is an issue that uh, some guys just don't understand. If for any reason a DOT officer comes up and does an inspection on you, okay, number one, if he checks your tires and he sees something wrong with your tires, he can take that tread depth gauge and he can measure it at any part of that tire that is supposed to have tread on it. So if any part of that tire, let's say, for example, it's got some coping issues or it has, let's say the trailer tire is wearing on the side, any side that is supposed to have tread on that tire and it does not meet the 230 second requirement, you will be put out of service. Again, you need to make sure that you check your tires every day. There is a 230 second minimum on your tires. If it's anything less than that, you will be put out of service. Okay. Make sure you stay on top of that. And it has to be, you have to have good tread depth across the whole face of the tire, um, where the tread is supposed to be. If it is wearing funny and it is wearing sideways onto the bald side, uh, or, you know, to the left side or to the right side. And a DOT puts that measurement gauge on there. Um, you, and you do not have at least two thirty seconds, you will be put out of service. We do not like out of services. Uh, so make sure you maintain that. Okay. <clears throat> um, this particular tire is getting close to needing a change. Um, I think we had a little bit of an issue with, uh, a trailer tire that was either we hit something in the road or something like that. I can't remember what it was, but this particular trailer tire is a spare and when I did this inspection, it was done on a uh, Saturday, so nobody was really open. However, it still meets DOT requirements. We're going to go ahead and run with it um, for the moment, um, but that tire is going to need to be replaced here pretty, fairly quickly. Um, and uh, but uh, I think we've got maybe probably four or five thousand miles left on it, um, but it's going to be coming off here within probably the next week. So. Um, so uh, we're going to go ahead and move on. And again, like we're doing, we're just going down the other side of the trailer here, uh, just checking everything out, making sure it's all good, uh, making sure we have no stress cracks. Again, when you're going through your inspection every morning, you want to make sure that you check. Um, you want to check and make sure that your straps are great. Um, there is one section on here that uh, we're going to go ahead and look at here. Um, and it's going to be right here on this strap. Um, when I was doing my inspection on this trailer, um, as you can see right up here, um, there's a fray. Now, um, typically whenever you have straps, you do not on a two inch strap, you want at least uh, less than a one eighth. I said a one eighth cut in your strap. Um, <clears throat> this strap definitely needs to be replaced. Um, and, uh, I believe we did replace that, uh, before the driver took off the next morning. 
Um, but uh, that strap, it needs to be retired. It, it, that strap is done. Um, if you see any straps like this that have any issues all the way down the straps, you need to make sure that there are no cuts in your straps. And this is part of your inspection, guys. Um, when you're running material and when you're running steel, um, there's, a, there's a good chance that if you're not using some sort of an edge protector that you're going to cut your straps. Um, you want to try to prevent that as much as possible and put an edge protector on there. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is if you see a strap that has any type of a fray on this and it's it within the securing point of that strap, it needs to be tossed. It needs to, you need to retire it. Okay. Um, let's go on to here. So as you can see, I'm sitting there fingering the strap, uh, trying to, um, trying to uh, explain why um, on that. But uh, it's definitely something that um, if it gets to that point, it needs to be pulled off there and another strap needs to be used. So, um, okay, so this is where I was looking at uh, kind of trying to figure out what was going on with the trailer, uh, with the trailer tires. Um, this trailer tire was actually on the trailer um, before that tire got on there. And clearly there was something going on with this trailer tire. That's the reason why it was removed. Um, we need to probably uh, we need to go ahead and get this in and get a get a couple new tires. Um, that way we're we're good to go on that. Um, so yeah, fingering the strap. That is correct, Jordan. We were fingering the strap. <laughs> yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now we're going to get into what I would say the every week inspection. Everything we just discussed here um, is pretty much an everyday inspection. It's not something that you do every other day. It's not something that you do once a week. The, what we were just discussing and what we just went through is an everyday inspection. Okay. This is something that you need to do every single solitary day. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do basically what's called what I would call a weekly inspection and the COVID continues. That is correct. So your weekly inspection is going to be a little bit more. It's really not that difficult, um, but it's going to be fairly simple to do. It involves jacking up the trailer. Okay. Um, and on this particular one, we only jacked up the one side, <clears throat> um, but you need to jack up the trailer. And what you're going to do is, I know I'm kind of moving here a little bit, but you're going to rotate your, you're going to um, turn your tires and you're going to listen to the system. You're going to listen to your brakes. You're going to listen to how they rub. You're going to listen to if there's any big jingling inside the tire. I call it jingling, but it may not be jingling. I, you know, everybody may have a different word for it, but I call it jingling. If there's any type of real rattling inside of the, inside your drums, there's going to be a problem with your brakes and you need to take them apart and you need to fix them. Okay. If your tires do not have enough drag, I did jack it up real nice, Jordan. It was jacked up so nice. So anyways, <laughs> so anyways, you're going to rotate these tires and you're going to spin them and you're going to listen and you're going to make sure that that number one, you've got plenty of brake drag, which if you're running 12-2 brakes and they're properly adjusted, you're going to have some sort of a brake drag, and that's normal. You need to make sure that there's some sort of a brake drag, all right? And you're going to listen for anything that's going wrong inside your inside your drums. You need to make sure you just need to make sure that that you got proper brakes, okay? Um, so once you do that, you're going to come to the front side of the tire. Why the tire is lifted up? And you're basically going to try to shake the tire. Now, what you're trying to accomplish here when you shake in this tire is you're checking for bearing play. Okay. Your bearing play is getting very important. Um, this is one thing that I tell everybody who, who gets involved in this. It is cheaper to change bearings than it is to change your wheel, your hub assembly, and everything that goes along with it. For the most part, I recommend guys changing out their bearings every 40,000 miles at the minimum. No, I do not want three more kids. No, Casey, absolutely not. However, I, I love to play, Leanne. If you, if, you want, if you want to try to make some kids, I'm, I'm definitely there. <laughs> That's messed up. Shake it real good. <laughs> That's right. So anyways, on this tire... 
you want to go ahead and shake the tire and there's going to be a slight <coughs> there'll be a slight of play there'll be slight play in in that bearing and you want something like that on a grease axle you do not want them incredibly tight um, yes I did say tight um, in this particular case you don't want your bearings real tight um, however um, you don't you want them snug you, on these bearings you do not want them very tight you want to be able to have a little bit of play in them and the reason why is because we're talking grease and not oil oil based axles are a lot different you can tighten them up much more and um, yes yeah, slight play it needs to be basically I mean it's basically not even a sixteenth of an inch you might get a little bit of a sixteenth of an inch play in your uh, in your wheel and that's okay for for grease bearings um, and you want to do this with every single axle or every single wheel that you have and the reason why you want to do this is like I said bearings are cheap um, I mean you can pick up a set of bearings for this um, and completely tear this thing down and put it back together in a couple you know in a few minutes if you know what you're doing um, the bearings are cheap that's something that um, you know I would much rather you spend twenty dollars on a set of bearings then lose a whole whole set assembly which is going to cost you you got the cost of the tire which is going to be I don't know probably 150 bucks 180 bucks depending on what kind of tire you got you got your rim that's going to be another sixty dollars probably you're going to have your hub you're going to have your hub that you got to worry about which is probably eighty bucks um, and then you have to worry about um, possibly uh, hitting a car or hitting hitting something else coming down the other opposite end of the road running and, and maintaining your bearings is so important in these smaller trailers it's even important in their bigger trucks but especially in these smaller trailers if you want to keep them up um, um, you know you just need to make sure that these things are taken care of very very important um, and if it gets to the point where, you know, you, you, you're starting to have problems with your brakes, well, use the opportunity. Anytime you break this wheel seal down, anytime you break this wheel down to do anything to your bearings or your brakes, you never skip on changing out your bearings and even your races. In some cases, your races don't need to be changed. Um, in other cases, they do. Um, it's just depending on how many miles as you got on that basically that trailer and that axle and You need to take take all that into consideration whenever you're doing it Typically with us we change the bearings every about every 40,000 miles sometimes it's 35,000 sometimes it's 45,000 depending on how they're wearing <clears throat> But uh, for the most part our standard practice for any type of 15k trailer which basically is a 7k axle Basically, each one of your axles can handle 7,000 pounds um, is every 40,000 miles. That's a good rule of thumb, and it has. Um, we hardly have any issues with any of our trailer uh, trailer tires having problems. Um, the axles wearing great, or the tri the tires wearing great, so on and so forth. About every 40,000, like I said, bearings are cheap. You got to get the kids to bed. Holy cow! Thanks a lot, Tina, for being here. Sorry I was a professor and sorry I bored you to death. But uh, you have a good night. Thanks a lot for being in here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, other than that, guys, uh, you know, typically you're going to do this once a week um, as far as, you know, checking the play in your bearings and stuff like that. You want to do that about once a week. Um, you know, every Saturday. It takes, I don't know, probably 20 minutes or so. Get everything jacked up and... Uh, um, um, and then move it uh, and then go through and, and, and do it. Um, you know, it, it's pretty simple. As far as putting bearing grease inside your bearings, um, we typically don't do a lot of that. We pack them full um, when we got them or when we get them. And as long as they wear fine and as long as we're not getting too excessive amounts of play in the bearings, typically we pretty much don't touch the, uh, the amount of uh, grease that's in them. But we also utilize, uh, you know, a lot of Lucas products, um, which is a very good grease. Um, and, it, you know, it's going to vary based upon your grease that you're using. But uh, the fact of the matter is, is, you know, it's pretty it's pretty simple to do. So. But uh, um, anyways, I think that's going to cover everything for about a 15 K trailer. Um, there's my big fat head again, and I look like a moron with the GoPro up on top of my head. Man, I tell you what, I really do like the GoPros, but
But man, I tell you what, they just don't have the battery life. I, I have a GoPro Hero 8 right here. And I'm telling you right now, this thing is great when it takes video. But man, I tell you what, the battery life or the battery life on it just sucks. Just it is what it is. So, but anyhow, um, that's pretty much covering how we how we do an inspection on a trailer. Um, does anybody have any questions? I mean, uh, did I cover everything? Casey, do you have anything you want to add? Do you think I covered everything pretty well? I mean, what, what are you thinking? Jordan, do you have anything to add? Anybody have anything to add that I missed or did uh, did I do a good job covering up? What do you guys think? Pretty decent, pretty horrible. Think it you think I covered pretty much everything? Well, you can look at it two, two different ways and I got to be careful because I'm an owner of a company and um, DOT right now, um, they are hot, hot and heavy. You need you guys you need to make sure that you have all of your stuff um, taken care of. Um, uh, elaborate on the DOT, Jordan. Is that what you're saying? You guys have to realize the DOT are out there to um, to protect uh, the the public from from a lot of problems that are out there, um, and I have to be careful what I say. Do I think that there are some problems with the DOT? Yes, I do, but overall, I think their intentions are to make sure that we keep our safety. Um, now, I don't want to go into a lot of that stuff, <clears throat> but. Uh, I can't really go into too much detail on that. Um, I don't. Yeah, I think I did a pretty pretty decent job on trying to do it. Sorry, I'm a little boring, guys. I'm I'm trying to be as entertaining as I possibly can. But uh, but for number one, Bub's not here, um, which is very very helpful. He's he's very uh, he has a lot of com com uh, com uh, comedic relief, I guess you would say. Um, and uh, I've. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm not a very, <clears throat> I try to be an upbeat fellow. Um, but the only time I get real funny is, uh, when I drink. So, um, and I try to, um, um, I want to try to keep my, I want to keep my, um, <laughs> I don't want to drink too much. So, uh, it is what it is. But, uh, anyways, uh, I appreciate you guys showing up tonight. Uh, this stream turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way it, uh, with the way it worked. Um, I do have some message here that, uh, um, I just got a message from, uh, an old driver that, uh, may want to try to come back. Um, I just don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to work with him. Um, yeah, we'll see. Anyways. Um, yeah, we definitely need to, uh, this weekend, uh, hopefully Lee, uh, isn't going to kill me when I, when I say this, uh, we definitely would like to have some, uh, steaks with you guys. Um, if you guys have, uh, have an opportunity to swing out get together, maybe have a couple of beers. Um, um, but, uh, um, I think that's pretty much it for night. Um, but yeah, so. Anyways, if you guys have any questions, uh, if I if I didn't cover anything, or you feel as though I missed something, uh, you guys are more than able to uh, give me a call here in the office. Uh, office lines are open um, between uh, eight and five a uh, five p.m. Um, you're more than welcome to give me a call then. Um, however, if uh, if you have my uh, cell, um, if I answer it, I'll I'll pick it up and I'll try to get to you as soon as I can. Um, I will never get my cell phone out over uh, YouTube for various reasons. Um, available Saturday. 
well, if you guys want to do it Saturday, Saturday works for me. Um, I do know that, uh, I know Lee said something to me earlier today about having something that she had to get taken care of this week. So I don't, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if, if we're going to be able to do it Saturday. Um, text me, everybody that, uh, has my cell, go ahead and text me and, uh, uh, we'll try to get something squared away. Curtis, um, I'd love for you to show up if you can, but, uh, I do understand you're running out to California. Um, but, uh, we definitely like to see you here. Um, and, uh, if we can get all the girls, uh, that would be great. I do know that, um, well, you got to realize I'm a busy dude, uh, Jordan. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff that's going on. <coughs> so anyways, um, I think Dawn, if I'm not mistaken, I know Dawn is heading up this way. She's, uh, she's actually coming out of Florida. And if I'm not mistaken, I think she's going to be up here. I think she's going to be up here later tomorrow night. Um, I think that's what it is. So she may be able to be here. I, I don't know what her plan is. I don't know if she's got to get home. Um, I do know that she was going to get here, but it was going to be late tomorrow. And um, I can't remember to save my life if, if, uh, if she was going to spend the night or if she was just going to um, um, head on, uh, head on back home. So, but uh, if she's here, that'd be great. I love, you know, I'd love to have everybody here if we could. Um, and that'd be, I, I think that would be pretty cool. So anyways, guys, um, I appreciate you all coming. Um, this turned out to be, I think, a very good live, um, even though it's more of a professor type of a talk. And uh, I really enjoyed doing this tonight. This was um um, this was a, uh, this was, in my opinion, this turned out to be a really great live. Um, uh, again, um, I really do appreciate everybody showing up tonight. Um, and, uh, hopefully we'll keep this going on and, and, uh, um, uh, work it from there. But, uh, you guys have a phenomenal evening and, uh, we will see you guys, uh, a little later. Um, yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's pretty much. I think that's pretty much all. So other than that, uh, let me see about how I can close this thing down. So anyways, you guys have a good night again.